Okay, part three. Here I'm working with the pinch roller arms that were frozen. Uh, I removed them, relubricated them, and put them back in place. Here's the reference plate on next to on the on the bench next to the transport. I'm going to use that to set the height of the pinch rollers. Since I had them apart, the uh, the height needs to be reset. Um, once again, I mentioned this before. Uh, the those reference plates you can buy them on eBay. Some are made of uh, plexiglass. Some are made of steel. Uh, plexiglass ones are cheaper. Probably wear out sooner. Probably warp. <laughs> but they're good for uh, one or two uses. If you're getting really serious about it, uh, get the steel one. So I'm working with those pinch rollers. I remove the arms. It's now removing. I think I'm relubricating the, the pinch rollers. Is what's happening here. Uh, I made the video a few days ago. Now I'm adding some audio to it today. They were, they were pretty badly frozen. There's a plastic nut that holds the pinch roller arm in place. <clears throat> that, that's the height adjustment. Um, you can count turns as you take it off and then uh, put it on with the same number of turns and that will get you uh, approximately where it, uh, where it was originally. <clears throat> but it's, um, it's a good idea to have the reference plate so you can uh, get it fairly exact. And you'll have to uh, uh, maybe make a cutaway cassette so that you can uh, actually look at the tape path while it's running. <clears throat> you can get mirror cassettes uh, also. So that um, you put it in there and look at the mirror and watch the tape run. Make sure it's running smoothly and, and uh, adjust it that way. And the final adjustment would be using an alignment tape. Uh, I have a, uh, well it's a replica of the original Nakamichi head height adjustment. It actually has a, uh, a narrow track that's the width of the uh, playhead track uh, that is erased. So uh, you adjust the height the head height for um, minimum audio rather than use it while running that tape. And that uh, gets the height correct. <clears throat> they also have uh, a, 10 and a 10 kilohertz uh, tape for adjusting the head azimuth. The Nakamichi service manual recommends using 15 and 20k also, but um, I don't have those tapes. I do have um, sound technology uh, uh, alignment tape. It's uh, a few years old, but uh, I found it t to match pretty well to the to the newer alignment tapes that I have, which I got from ANT Audio, and uh, he uh, he is in uh, England. And um, I'll look up his uh, web. Okay, it's ant-audio.co.uk. Um, his email address is info at ant-audio.co.uk. 
and I believe he has a website also and let me see if I can get okay triple w dot a n t hyphen audio dot co dot u k and that's his website google an a n t hyphen audio I'm sure you'll find it fumbling around resetting the pinch rollers getting them back in place what am I doing here still working on the pinch rollers I think what happened is the the plastic no, the metal support pin that goes into the plastic of the subplate of the transport that pin um, actually came out so I'm putting it back in it, it fits it fits tight so I think it'll stay in place so this one's uh, somewhat bad shape maybe uh, if you get lucky maybe you don't have to deal with the pinch rollers not all of them are frozen like that Some people would probably throw this away, <laughs> but I fix them. Okay, looks like the pinch roller is going back in. You can see the spring on the um, the yellow cloth. Okay, so we're going back together. Things are going back together. If anyone's watching this video still at this point, I'd be surprised. <laughs> but there, uh, you never know. You never know who's out there and what they want to do. So here it is. Here's how you go through them. Here's how you get them working again. It's a good sounding machine. It's it's, it's worth doing. It's worth fixing. Okay, I'm putting that plastic nut on and trying to get it close to uh, where it should be. I, once again, the uh, the reference plate will tell me how to how to get it to exact to the exact height. That reference plate, it's. Uh, it's a it's not exclusive to Nakamichi it's a, it's a standard uh, Philips compact set thing you use it on any cassette deck to set it up all right looks like I see I got a pinch roller there <laughs> come on hurry up there, the pinch roller is going back in. Things are going back together. There's a tiny little circlip going on. And if I'm lucky, it doesn't fly out of my hands. Looks like I'm relubricating the uh, the other pinch roller for the supply side.
I'm reusing the the uh, existing pinch rollers. Usually they hold up pretty well. Uh, you you can buy new ones, but uh, Nakamichi uses a a little bit different size from from the rest of the world. <laughs> it's easy to find uh, eight millimeter height pinch rollers, but Nakamichi uses uh, seven millimeter. So just remember 711. It's 11 meter, 11 millimeter uh, outer diameter and 7 millimeter height with a 2 millimeter um, bearing. Inner diameter, I guess you could say. Inner diameter is 2 millimeters. And I did. I I do have some uh, replacement pinch rollers. And if I if I see problems with the tape path, I might replace one or two of them. They're expensive and hard to find. But uh, I think I got some from a guy in Poland. I found him on eBay. It also took about a month to to get the things. So here I am with the reference plate, getting the height set. <clears throat> Turn the nut a little bit, test it to see where you are, and rinse and repeat. Sorry about the middle finger. I'm not trying to flip you off, really. <laughs> now the cassette carriage is going back into place. I think I'm looking for the little plastic washer that goes on the side of the cassette carriage at the pivot point. There's a small plastic washer and it's uh, it's it's almost invisible. You can put it down on the bench in front of you and not see it, or I can. <laughs> it's in there somewhere. I did find it eventually and put it back in place. Many small parts for a part, apparently. <laughs> there we go. You can see now. back in place. Uh, rotating the cam to get everything in a stop position rather than play position. There's that washer. Yay, I found it. <laughs> at the pivot point on the cassette carriage. And the cassette carriage is going back into place. You can operate the eject mechanism using the little lever on 
the uh, left side of the transport, you know, the, where your left hand would be, I suppose I should say. The counter belt's going back in. It uh, rotates the counter and the auto stop mechanism. There's a small, everything's small, isn't it? Now there's a, a rotating vane and uh, an optical sensor and a tiny light bulb. And when uh, when that stops, you know you're at the end of the tape, and and uh, the deck will go into stop mode. I think we're okay at this point. We're ready to test it. I'm going to plug it into the to the main chassis just for test. Little frame piece goes on the side, yeah. And here we go, the moment of truth. <laughs> Don't worry about plugging in all the cables. Just get the cable for the motor and the. Uh, the potentiometer that um, uh, goes on the cam. It's uh, it's a sensor. Call it a cam position sensor, right? And uh, taking the AC cord and plugging it into my isolation transformer. It's a little safer that way, I think. It also has a, uh, the transformer also has a, uh, a meter on it to monitor, monitor voltage and current so I know if there's a short or, or anything gone wrong. Uh, okay, at this point I notice I had forgotten to put the belt in place for the mode motor, between the mode motor and cam. see things moving around so that's a good sign I'll test it and fast forward rewind and play things are looking good I'm getting my okay my my tape that I don't care much about. <laughs> the first tape you want to first tape you put in, you don't want to have anything valuable because it might get chewed. But in this case it didn't. Actually played correctly. And here's a torque measuring cassette. and it measured about 40 gram, 40 gram centimeters of take up torque which is pretty much okay it should be 55 plus or minus 10 and after the the deck ran for an hour or two uh, that torque did come up and fall within spec it, it relies on a, uh, a piece of felt a felt clutch, uh, slip clutch. And here we are with the machine reassembled and playing music. Sorry, I muted the music. There's no audio, but it did play correctly and it sounded good. So there you have it.